Hello, my name is Philip Cameron, and you have just happened across a program called Daily Faith. This is a time where we can get together and believe God for great things. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And as you open your spirit up to the voice of God, I believe He can bring healing and restoration and authority and direction into your life. We are living in perilous times. I have never, I've been in America since 1969 is when I first came here. I'm Scottish, if you're wondering where my accent's from. I've never seen America in such a tizzy. I remember the Carter years. I remember the, 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 the depression and that came across the country and the morose that came across the country and 55 mile an hour speed limits and all the, oh my goodness. And I thought, America's done. And then Ronald Reagan showed up and, and strutted across the, the stages as we are the greatest nation in the world. And America shook itself and rose again. And I'm, I, I see the same pattern at the moment. This uncertainty stuff is going on in this world. And um, if what happens is whenever there's weakness, whenever there's weakness shown to the rest of the world, then all of the evil and all of the darkness they activate because they sense it. It's like blood in the water for sharks. And I don't know if you're watching all the news recently, but um, I, just, I just saw that the Chinese have, are, are putting warships close to Hawaii. And um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a terrifying de development. There, that's, there's the headline of it. And the Chinese are moving warships close to Hawaii. And um, um, I was watching Stuart Varney this morning, and that's what, what, that's what they were reporting as well. And the reason because of that is, is, the reason why that's happening is because America has just agreed with the UK to provide nuclear war, uh, submarines rather, for Australia. Now, they're not nuclear armed, but they're nuclear powered. And a nuclear powered submarine can go under the water for an extended length of time, and they're almost impossible to detect. And Australia, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you go into a Chinese classroom and you'll see the map of China, they have Australia marked out as, as, their, as part of their country. They, they have a historical claim on, they want Australia to be theirs. And here we have the United Kingdom and the United States providing nuclear submarines for them. And what's that, what that's done is, is it's made the Chinese angry, and they're now putting submarines and warships beside Hawaii, which is, a, of course, a part of America. So we are living in absolutely perilous times. On top of that, the French, the, the Australians, had placed an order with the French government for submarines and canceled that because they liked American tech, of course, they liked American technology better. And so now they're angry at America and there's all kinds of, of discord now between America and the European commu community. And uh, so that is just, that alone is, an, is a concerning thing. The Bible says the whole earth is going to groan and, 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 and travail. And we are seeing that happening as we are sitting here. Your news, your news is like reading Revelation. What's happening in the world today, every day, it's almost like, oh my goodness, that's another, that's another piece of the jigsaw. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but yesterday, North Korea and South Korea both launched ballistic missiles on the same day. And if you remember um, President Trump trying to contain um, North Korea, and uh, now they're, they've just sent out a, a cruise missile and that can now reach Japan. So all of that region, the whole Chinese, that South um, Asian, that's all going to activate, I'm telling you now. And America being weakened by this perception through Afghanistan is absolutely causing strife and concern and jitters. The thing that concerns me as I'm looking at all the news stories that I'm watching and I'm imbibing is that there's, the world is jittery. Everybody is on edge, and when that happens, that's when mistakes take place. The last world war started because of jitters, and, um, <laughs> and I'm watching the same kind of pattern coming out on top of that. Inflation, I haven't been watching this recently, but inflation is absolutely taking off. The, the worst tax 
that you and I could ever have is inflation because it's a silent tax. You don't see it in black and white. You see it in the grocery store, in the gas station, in every part of your life. And um, they are saying now that, that inflation is way worse than they first thought. It's the, it's the highest food prices since the 70s. And that's, that's just going back to that time I was telling you. So I just, uh, I just I pray that God intervenes in our situation because we need, we need God to arise. And on top of that, of course, you know the, the, the continual battle over masks and, and uh, vaccinations. All of those things, the whole mix, it's a boiling pot right now, now of trouble. And if ever we've needed the church, I was recently, I took my sons and we went for a, a couple of weeks to Italy. And I was praying one day, just seeking God's face. And I said, Lord, please talk to me. And he says, the church needs to get its mask off. Now, I'm not talking about the thing they're making is wear that doesn't work. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about we need to tear off our mask and be seen. We need to start standing up and speaking the truth in righteousness and let this world know that there is a king in Zion and his name is the Lord Jesus. And so uh, we are we are just we are anticipating God to do something. And I want you to know this, that he's in control. He's in control of your circumstance. Nothing is a shock to God. Nothing is a surprise to the, to the Father. And He is working behind the scenes. In my life, here's a testimony. In my life, when I have thought God's been doing nothing, He's been working most. The times in my life, in my experience, that I've thought, Lord, where are you? What's happening? And all the time, His hand was working unseen in my life. And I believe that God's hand is working unseen in our, nation's, in our nation's behalf and on our nation to make us dependent on Him again. And uh, so we just, we, we are praying and we're believing God for great things. God is moving tremendously. In spite of all this, our mission work in Moldova is growing. I got a photograph just the other day. What, put that photograph up, Philip, of our kids. And um, this, is, this just came to me like two days ago. And uh, we have 52 kids and growing. There's still more coming in. But we've got 52 kids at Vatra Village right now. And uh, that is not including, we have a home in the Ukraine that ho houses 24 kids. We haven't got their pictures yet. Uh, so we're, we're hoping for those. But we are growing in the middle of all this stuff. Our young people in, in Moldova, the, the, the covid Disaster is worse than, than America has ever seen because they don't have the money, they don't have the vaccines. Um, you can go down and get pay a couple of bucks and get a vaccination paper to show you've been vaccinated and you haven't been vaccinated. So it's, it's just everything is in turmoil. And our young folk are out right now going out and in into the villages and they're helping widows and broken families. These kids are orphans. These kids have come from dire circumstances, have come to Vatra village, found the Lord Jesus, become sons and daughters. And now they are going out into the highways and byways and bringing hope and healing to families and widows, bringing food. Now winter time is about upon us, and which, which means we're going to put a whole bunch of more effort into coal and wood to keep these dear souls alive. All done by the hands of orphans. That's why our ministry is called Orphan's Hands, because they are reaching out through their own circumstances to those in need. And um, so we are excited beyond belief. And we take these kids, for those who don't know, in Moldova, the poorest country in Europe, a young person is put on the street when they're 16 years of age. And they come, they either are going to be found by the trafficker or, or we can find them before the trafficker. And we have homes that we've built, the most beautiful place you've ever seen in your life. God spoke to us and said, if you treat the orphan as they were mine, because they are, he said, I'll honor and bless you for being faithful to them. This is not throwing a, a bowl of rice at an orphan and saying, well, there you are, and then telling you about it. This is adopting someone, changing their whole life, their whole experience, and putting them into school, educating them, feeding them, clothing them housing them in the most beautiful place. And by doing so, we're turning orphans into sons and daughters and sons and daughters into missionaries. It all begins in a place called Vatra Village. Watch this. You start by carving out a space. 
to build safe places for them, to regain trust in themselves and in humanity. You start by giving them a place to belong, to call home. You start by pulling out the roots of fear, of abandonment and rejection. You start by letting them know how much they matter and how loved they are. You start by showing them what love is. You start by teaching them to release the burden it is not theirs to carry. You start by teaching them to forgive the broken people who have wronged them and to forgive themselves. You start to give them the tools to better themselves and to change their future. You start by educating and empowering them. You start by speaking truth into their potential. You start by putting candles on their birthday cakes. This is the place, the place where the orphan's hand starts. On the other side of fear, abuse, poverty and human trafficking stands Vatra village. Countless lives, one mission, to lift up the fallen. Because of Vatra village, I am safe. I have food. I have a bed. School to go. A family. But most importantly, Vatra Village gave us God. This is the miracle of Vatra Village. A miracle that wouldn't have been possible without your kind giving. Your care and love opened doors of hope and allowed us to rescue the perishing. You've helped the orphan's hands build these amazing homes, so please, Continue to stand with us in prayer, faith, and action as we keep a light on for those that have lived in darkness for too long. You can change their life for one dollar a day. Thank you for caring. Each face you see, those beautiful young girls, in the hands of a trafficker, they tell us that they're used 30 to 50 times a day and can earn $300,000 a year each for the trafficker. If they're worth that to a trafficker, how much should they be worth to the church? And I'm asking you if you could help us, you can change your life for a dollar a day. A dollar a day won't change your financial outcome. It will bless your outcome because when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. But if you would like to help us and join with us and say, Philip, we would like to stand with you and support Vatra Village. And by giving a dollar a day, you can change your life forever. These young folk, we are limited. Just quite frankly, we are limited by how much we can take in, by how much funds we have to, to disperse and support them with. And I pray that you'll help us right now and you'll, you'll, you'll ask God, can I give a dollar a day to help these kids find Jesus, go to school, and then in turn become missionaries. The address is real simple. The Orphan's Hands PO Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. PO Box 25, really easy. Great, easy post number box. PO Box 25, Clinton. Remember Bill and Hillary Clinton. That's a negative way to remember, but that's how I, that's how I remember it. Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. You can call us, 833-DAILY-FAITH. Just dial Daily Faith on your, your phone keypad. Or you can go, the quickest and easiest way is to go to dailyfaith.tv. And there's a giving page right there. And you can give and be a part of that. Right now, we are in a challenge, a, 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 an exciting and terrifying challenge, both at the same time. I was watching the news this morning, I, I was early this morning, on Stuart Varney on Fox News. And they were telling us that the container systems, remember that ship that, that went aground, the green, whatever it was, in, in the Suez Canal and the container ship that, that got stuck? Well, what happened was that, along with the COVID and along with everything else, has created a crisis in 
container ships and moving stuff around the world. So the furniture stores, are, this, this guy was on today in the news, the furniture stores are running out of furniture and they're eight months behind in a backlog from getting the stuff into the furniture storerooms. They're telling you, I, I was watching this morning, buy your Christmas stuff right now because there's no promise that any Christmas things will be in the shops and the stores by Christmas time. So what's happened is we have this f fabulous um, home. We've just finished a brand new house uh, in, in Vatter Village called Betzer House. Dan Betzer and his wife Darlene have been friends of our ministry for many, many years. They have given. In fact, their church has given more than any other church in the United States in helping the orphan's hands. A great man of God. And uh, they, we wanted to honor him. He retired this last year. And we wanted to honor Pastor Betzer. And we called the, the, this most recent house Betzer House. And um, they'll run some video right now to let you see. And uh, I'll let you see what... The, so this is where the house is as we st stay, stand right this minute. That is the house on the outside. And um, it is completely finished. I mean, all the way through, the new heating system's in. Everything is in place. We just need the furniture for it. And uh, uh, we, we buy the furniture. To buy the furniture in Moldova costs way more than America, but it's also very bad quality. So we, as you can see, the house is waiting for the furniture. If we can get the furniture for this house, it will allow us to take 15 more kids and rescue 15 more kids. And uh, so what my wife Chrissy and my daughter Melody, who are buying the furniture, in fact, they just bought two sofas the other day. As the funds come in, they're buying the furniture. Um, what, what, what we've done is there's five bedrooms and there is two, a living room and a kitchen. And we average the price of the, the cost of all the furnishings, the, the, I mean, everything, down to the salt and pepper shakers, the, the, the kitchen cabinets, all, the, all of the costs. Across the seven rooms in the house, it works out at $6,500 per room. And we are asking God to speak to folk to sponsor one of those rooms for $6,500. And those that do, we're asking you to send us a photograph of your family and we'll put your family in the room you've sponsored. So these kids will know that you made their future and their life possible. If you could help us today, it would be a great help. And um, let the Lord speak to your heart. And you can make bets or house complete and allow us to get these kids in as soon as we possibly can. So if you could pray about that, there's two ways you can help us. A dollar a day helps us support the ministry there. And if you'd like to sponsor one of the rooms in Betzer House, you can do that by going to uh, write a check out today to the Orphan's Hands, P.O. Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. And um, if you'd like to help us become a monthly sponsor and help us support Betzer House. And you're saying, well, Philip, I don't have $6,500, but I would like to help. Everything you can give towards us, as long as you mark it in your check for bets or house, we will put that, apply that and put that money towards the furnishing of bets or house. And um, I mean, everything down to salt and pepper shakers, vases, everything inside the house, um, they, they purchase and they send it there. So if you could help us do that, it would be, be really important. Those that give any amount today, whatever you feel that to help us with, if you, whether you're a monthly partner or a one-time giver to help us with Better House, I'm going to send you this book entitled Our Bummer Lamb. It's the story of how we began 30-odd years ago. I adopted a, a wee boy in an orphanage in Romania, and this is the story. Watch this video, and you'll understand what a bummer lamb is all about. Watch this. A lamb that has been rejected by its mother is called a bummer lamb. Once its mother abandons her lamb, it is forever. The lamb will die broken, unless a shepherd rescues it. He takes the lamb into his home, feeds, cares, and redeems the broken animal. When returned to the flock, that bummer lamb never forgets the one who redeemed it. Standing abandoned in a Romanian orphanage, my wife Chrissy and I found a bummer lamb. His name was Andre. This book is the story of how a family 
made room for a little forsaken bummer lamb. It is the story of us all. We stand redeemed by the care of the Good Shepherd. And you can get that book by helping us reach these young folk and changing lives. My guest today is a, is a great man of God, a great man of God. Not just on a, in a pulpit, but also the things that he does that I know he does that I can't even talk about. In regards to trafficking, he is, God is using him in a tremendous way. And um, their church, the Healing Place in Louisiana and Shreveport, their kids every month, they've got Buddy Barrels, the BGMC program, and they, they have a hold up every month in their church. That's the only way I can describe it. It's like, it's like they, might, they might be wearing masks and they get all the church to give, all their, all their change. And um, they have given us thousands of dollars by their incredible young folk. And they, I mean, they march in there and uh, it's, it's something to behold. I've watched it and I thought, wow, I love this. And uh, I am so thankful that Scott Etheridge is on, my, uh, on Daily Faith today with me. Scott, thank you for being with us. God bless you. And um, we love those buddy barrels. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Uh, it's awesome. We we did uh, we did change a little bit um, for COVID stuff, and uh, so we were like, well, you know, everybody's not comfortable with like you know going to kids and stuff like that. So basically, we just made it fun. We took two cornhole um, uh, boxes and we yeah. painted them Buddy Barrel, and he's got a hole in the middle of his head, and they <laughs> throw the change through the hole, and it goes in a bucket <laughs> underneath it. We put it in the foyer, so on your way out, you just. You just fun. give to orphans hands. So we made, uh, Dana made, uh, made it fun. And, yeah. uh, we also kind of go with that whole concept of you may never go to Moldova, but you can go by giving yeah, and yeah. you can actually go there by giving. And so that's our whole thing. Go by giving, take an action step, move. Uh, Absolutely. this is a moment. And in this moment, we've got to make a move. We believe yeah. the word of God demands a response yes. And uh, through our relationship uh, and then connecting with Orphan's Hands, it just became a part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And if you look at anything we have, Orphan's Hands is going to be, if it's not on the top, it's in the top three in our compassion uh, ministries tell, that, that we extend ourselves. When, when the COVID thing really exploded, you had a drive-by giving one day, didn't you? I remember that. And I thought to myself, now that's... We that did. So we clever. had drive-by. <laughs> we had drive-by BGMC when we weren't meeting in person. We were like, hey, it's online and it's the first Sunday. So why are we going to... Let's do drive-by BGMC. So we had people so were cool. coming. They were, they were sitting... Uh, the kids would come in the cars and they were sitting in the sunroof on top of the car and they were <laughs> throwing their change. They were throwing their that change so out. Cool. And um, oh. so we were just like, you know, nothing is going to keep us from doing what God has no. told us to do. Nothing. None we're not going to be rebellious. None we're not going to be rebellious towards no. anyone, but we are going to do what God yes. has told us to do. And if we've got to come up with the most creative, crazy, weird things, we're going to do it. We don't mind being fools for Christ. It's, that it's all good. That, that, when, when, you're, when you're called and, and appointed to do something, whatever man says, you'll find a way around it. You'll find, you'll find a way to succeed what God's called you to do. And, and the healing place has been part of that. And I appreciate you guys. You have more than you know how, how much I appreciate it. I'm, I'm really excited to have you on today because you brought to my attention something that I think is very important. That last evening and today is a very, very special day. So if you could touch on that for a wee moment. I know there's something else the Lord's put in your heart, but I want you to... We in the West have forgotten about the fact that God's a Jew. God is still, <laughs> just in case it, it slipped your mind, God is still a Jew and we have our calendar, uh, but God has his calendar. And, and 10 right. days ago was the new year, the Jewish new year. And today, yesterday evening and today, tell yep. us what's, what's important about this season within right this moment. Yeah, so one thing I think is super important, and again, I think in the church world, we are a people of extremes. We can take anything to the extreme, either denying it or not paying attention to it or paying too much attention to it, where we kind of get our eyes off of Jesus. But I think that with the feasts, if you read the Word of God, they're never one time called the Feast of the Jews. They're called the Feast wow. of the Lord. Yes. 
it's never one time called the Feast of the Jews. It, they're wow. always called the Feast of the Lord. And if you look at even, uh, even during the, the end times and even after that, there is a feast that's being celebrated when the nations come up to worship. Yeah. And it's the Feast yeah. of Tabernacles, which we're yeah. about to come into. So yeah. to say that the feast is just for Jews is, is really not according to the word of God. And again, we can get way off track and in, in, in doing all that thing because in Christ, you know, he's nailed all the holy days to the cross and we get all of that. But I do believe that there are seasons and times that matter. I agree. And and the and the feasts, you know, we're if you look at the feasts, every feast has a a present tense in the word of God, but it also has a future tense, and then it also has a future future tense. So we know mm -hmm. that in the Passover. Jesus fulfilled that. He's the Lamb of God. We know that Pentecost was fulfilled. We know. And if and if we take just where we're at in, in the feasts uh, as a as an overview, we are in between kind of Pentecost and trumpets. We're we're walking through this wilderness land of the earth and we're waiting for that yeah. trumpet call. And so 10 days ago, we began the Jewish New Year and we stepped into what's known as the Feast of Trumpets, that time of blasting. And wow. during those 10 days, they call it the 10 days of awe. And in that, it's a time of introspection, internal searching, pausing. The trumpet awakens us to kind of look inside and take a pause. And you said this earlier. You said, you know, pause to take a pause. You even said, you know, as the church, we don't need to, to spiritually mask up, but our voice needs to be heard. Our voice yes. is a trumpet. And if you look at the last 10 days globally oh my goodness oh it my lines goodness. up with 10 days of awe really a a trumpet oh blast the last 10 days just globally you just talked about four stories that you saw just this morning this morning yes. epic epic yeah. end of days type stuff but if you look at the last 10 days literally there has been a trumpet blast in the globe of a wake up a wake up which leads us to today, which is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The highest holy day on the Jewish calendar is today. Yes. And it was a day of fasting. It was a day of repentance. Why am I repenting? Because of the trumpet blast. It's awakened you. It is a day of reckoning. It's a Jeez. day of atonement. It's a day that we as believers in Christ, we should really look at a day like today and yes, we should no. we should have that attitude every day. But this is a season where we need to say, Lord, forgive no. us. We repent for being silent. We repent yes. for not letting our voice be heard. Absolutely. And you know, Philip, you you'll you'll appreciate this. There were four distinct sounds that were blasted during the Feast of Trumpets. And you know, if you've ever heard a trumpet and and trumpet players. There's a similar sound, but there's also a distinctive sound in trumpet blasts. And there were four distinct sounds that were blasted during the Feast of Trumpets. One was called Takai. It's a, it's a long, single blast. Mm -hmm. And that meant a king's coronation. Somebody was being crowned. Wow. King, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you had Shavarim, which was three short blasts, and that was repentance for an unbeliever. Right? So then you had Trua, which is nine staccato blasts, and that was an awakening to believers. And then you had Takai de Gao, which is the longest blast you can hold, and that announces atonement. Like the Lamb of That's God so has come, right? Yeah. But if you really study it, when it talks about John the Baptist being a voice crying in the midst of the wilderness, that word yeah. voice harkens back to shofar, trumpet, and even lines up your throat, your voice, trumpet. Yes. And if you look at John the Baptist's call, he fulfills all four of those distinct blasts. All That's four amazing. of those sounds came through John the Baptist. And who are the I forerunners never... today? Waiting That's for that man. trumpet sound? Yes. We are the forerunners. We need to be sounding off of the king's coronation. There is a Absolutely. king. Absolutely. Yes, there is. You said it earlier. There is a king. We need to be... Uh, speaking out and saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Is it hand? We no. need to be speaking out and saying, awaken. Those of you that are slumbering and sleeping, awake, awake, awake. Yes. And we need to be 
sharing the good news that there is atonement for your sin. Oh, there man. is freedom. There is liberty. There yeah. is a Vatra village, right? There is a Vatra village that's been created for you, and it's called the kingdom of God, the where there God. is atonement. Yes. Well, this morning, before just as we were running the, the, the pre-show and the, the music starts and stuff, I was sitting here praying, and I said, thank God, through Jesus, every day is Yom Kippur. He, he, fulfilled, <laughs> yes. he fulfilled it completely. So I live in Yom Kippur, every, Yom Kippur every day because of His grace and mercy. But I yes. do think it is important for us just to honor our Father to say, we, we still recognize what you've done. And um, uh, one of the things that I always remember this time and in, in this feast is, this is the beginning of the six-day war that, that literally changed the world when Israel captured Jerusalem again, Jerusalem again for the first time in, in, in God knows how long. And so these are very significant times we're in. And I think, as you alluded to, we are lining up. It, it, the whole thing is lining up. This last 10 days, I have, I have my hair has been standing on end. <laughs> and what, what blows my mind, Scott, is that the church doesn't get, the church is sleeping, as you're saying. The church yeah. is asleep watching We these just continue to kind place. of, yeah, we just try to continue to do the same things that we've been doing over and over again, believing that that is going to somehow make a difference. And I believe that those that... I believe that one thing that really has happened, Philip, is maybe pastors, and, and I can put myself in this category, is COVID, just kind of everything that's happened in the last 18 months, really not just evaluating myself, but yeah. what are we doing? And if yeah. what we're doing, if it wasn't from the Lord, let's not do it anymore. And we changed probably more things in the last year than we had probably the previous five years combined of yes. just going, man, we were doing that and it was good, but you know, that that's not what the Lord is saying. So let's not do that. And, you know, we've changed some things in the schedule. Some people thought it was crazy. You know, uh, yeah. I just told people on Sunday, I was like, I can't find it in the Bible where it says Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. It's not in there anywhere. No. It doesn't no. say <laughs> that. It doesn't say that. So why are we trying to why are we trying to, because schools and athletics and all the other things that are going on, they don't care about Sundays and Wednesdays anymore. That spirit no. of the world doesn't care about those things. So why are we still trying to do the same thing? So we were just like, you know what, instead of trying to gather everybody for three or four times, let's make multiple opportunities for yeah. people to lean into what God is saying. And we just changed everything. And so like today, today's Thursday, this morning at 630 in the morning, I was leading prayer this morning. So it's not one gathering yeah. midweek. We're meeting this morning for prayer at noon today. We're meeting for prayer. It's another time to meet for prayer tonight, seven o'clock. We're meeting for prayer, declaring the promise, and then breaking down into small groups to study the word of God. We have three opportunities on Thursdays. Instead of one Wednesday night, we're creating yeah. space for people no matter what their schedules are, they can lean into what the Lord is saying. And then we just create all these other things because we want to be that trumpet blast. We want, yes. we want to be a voice crying in the midst of the wilderness, prepare the yeah. way of the Lord. My dad, my dad used to say constantly to me all the time. He said to me all the time, when the revolution stops revolutionizing, <laughs> it's time to go back to the revolution. Yep. And when, when there isn't the process of revolution taking place, whether it's in a nation, whether it's in a church, whether it's in our, ourselves, the moment that we become placid and, and stagnant, because what happens is if, if you're not moving and flowing and doing and growing, what happens is you begin to stagnate. And once you stagnate, that's when algae comes in and algae kills right. the oxygen and oxygen without uh, water without oxygen cannot sustain life. And it's time for the church that I, I was, I've just come back from Italy with my, my two sons and, and I was praying one day, clear as a bell. The Lord says, the church needs to rip its mask off. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, oh my goodness, 
And I saw it beyond, I mean, this whole mask thing and the vaccine thing has become so political. It's, it's, it's almost funny to watch all the nonsense is going on. And they're discovering um, in, in, uh, in Europe that the, the, the first folk that got the vaccination, that's no longer effective and they're more toxic than the one. Uh, it's just a mess. The whole thing's a mess. And the Lord said, I says, I says, are you talking about masks? He says, no, no, no. I'm talking about voices. It's time to rip yep, off voices. the church's mask and be heard voices. again. And be, if you, are, are, is it just me? Am I getting old? But when I talk to someone with one of these masks on, and I'm saying, pardon? And then they end up pulling the mask down and talking to me and then putting the mask, and I'm thinking, you've just lost the, oh my Lord. And the church needs to stand up and rip its mask off and yes. be heard in these days. Now, I know the Lord's been talking to you through the book of Isaiah. Tell us, tell us what God's been sharing with you. And I, I really think this is relevant. Apart from this, this Day of Atonement, what else has the Lord been talking to you and through you at the healing place? Well, you know, it, we're really trying to make sure that we are not an echo. <laughs> Because yeah. God didn't create us to be an echo. We want to be a voice yes, crying sir. in the midst of the well, wilderness. We don't want to just regurgitate something. We, we really want to be a significant voice crying in the midst of the wilderness. I think it's interesting that John the Baptist, when he was asked who he was, and in American church culture, you hear a lot of, instead of Jesus being the I am, you hear a lot of American church culture, I am. I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am this. I am this. Yeah. And when they asked John the Baptist who you are, he said, I am not. I'm not. He didn't start it with I am. He said, I am not. Because he realized his identity wasn't in necessarily who he thought he was, but who he wasn't. I'm not the son of God. I'm not the prophet. Even though Jesus said he was, he said, I'm not the prophet. He said, I am but a voice, one of many, but I am but a voice yeah. crying in the midst of the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And as we've been kind of walking this through, and this is for everybody. This is not just about church. This is just about everyone who's watching this. This is for you. You know, the Lord tells us in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us will prosper, which is an amazing promise from God. But yes. when you look at the context of it, it's out of their barrenness. They're empty. There are no children. Yeah. Women are not producing any children. And what does God say to them? God says, sing, O barren. Mm. Sing, they they. If you read if you read all the verses leading up to verse seventeen, it talks about isolation. It talks about being disgraced. It talks about being shamed. It talks about being filled with fear. It talks about most all the topics that we hear today. People feeling isolated, yeah. anxious, fearful, doubted, through. shamed, disgraced. Yeah. You know, you're not doing this this way. We're going to shame you into doing certain things. All those things, God is speaking to them in this. And he's saying, sing, O barren. Well, wait a second, God, I'm empty. I don't have any children. And God comes on to say, you don't have any children now, but guess what? Your children are going to inhabit desolate cities. Hmm. Empty, desolate cities. That's why we can speak this word to America oh, right now. No matter what yes. it looks like now, God is not saying, you know, do a dirge, O Baron. He's saying, sing, uh -uh. O Baron, enlarge, yes. stretch, strengthen, get deeper, put those stakes down deeper, stretch, yes. grow. You know what God is saying? In the worst economy in the history of America in some time, start a business. God has put an anointing on you. Now start this, do yes. this. Build this, stretch yes. this, dig deeper, dig deeper, stretch it out, dream again, yep. have visions I again. I agree. Just begin to speak and declare because yeah. the world, and I can speak to America, America is looking for someone to stand up and go, hey, no matter what's going on, it may seem empty and barren, but we're going to sing. Why? Because our children are going to inhabit desolate Hallelujah. cities. They're going to rebuild the waste yeah. places. They're going to they're going to create commerce and they're going to build the kingdom here on the earth. Yeah. Yes, the kingdom is to come, but Jesus brought the kingdom to us and filled us with the kingdom, with the Holy Spirit to build his kingdom, to advance his kingdom yes. on the earth until he comes, until that trumpet blows. Last. Oh, and he says, sing, O barren. You don't yes. 
singing praises does not line up with the natural thought of going through hardships, mm -hmm. but he says, sing. Because yes. you are going to do these things. There was, you're disgraced there was a, now, but, but you're going to be exalted. You're going to be elevated. Yeah, there was a course of priests whose job it was, whose ministry it was, was to go to the temple at midnight, the darkest hour, when everything was shut down, everything was quiet, everything was still. And these, these priests would go into the temple and begin to worship God in the nighttime. And I've learned in my experience and I guess when you're old enough and you've seen everything at least once through, I've learned in my life that the, the barrenness is connected to the song. When the, when, the, when the sacrifice, in the scripture, when the sacrifice began, the song of the Lord began also. Simultaneously to the sacrifice came the song. And sometimes we don't understand is that the, the, the greatest rewards, the greatest rewards of God is when you are singing in your barrenness. If you're watching today, yes. I know, I know, I know there's someone watching me right now and you have gone through barrenness and you're thinking, my God, uh, 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 there's no water, there's no life, there's nothing here but dust mm. and I'm eating dust and yep. I'm sitting and I'm going nowhere and I'm, I'm stuck in this thing. And the Lord yep. would say to you today that your barrenness is about to come to an end and there are going to be springs yep. of living water arrive and yeah. appear into your world and God is going to make you sing a song of redemption and victory and the things that were barren once will become alive and you will see the fruit of your worship as you begin yep. to move towards your, your, your voice and your victory in these days. So don't be yes. afraid, saith the Lord. Stand That's up and right. rejoice because my song will sing in you. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Jesus' name. The world says diminish. Wow. The world says diminish and God says oh. enlarge, stretch, oh. grow. It doesn't make sense, God. Exactly. Hallelujah. It's not supposed to make sense. It's no. not supposed to enlarge, Never does. stretch. Never does. Grow. If God's given you an idea, find somebody who can speak life into that idea and yes. come alongside of you and yes. move that thing forward. Man, God is oh, moving. Man. <laughs> you talk about barrenness. Elizabeth from the priesthood was barren. Zacharias wow. from yeah. the priesthood. Not only barren was cursed, but if you're from the priesthood of, you're from the Aaronic priesthood and you're barren, you are cursed. There's something wrong with you. And he goes into the temple to do his service, to yeah. do his calling and do his mantle. And God comes and he gets afraid, Hallelujah. but God gives him a word. And the word is your son won't look like you. He's not going to dress like you. He's not going to talk like you, but no. he is going to be a voice crying in the in midst of of the yeah. wilderness and his name's wow. not going to be Zacharias. His name will be John. And he Amazing. held on to that for nine months while she was carrying that boy for nine months. Yeah. And when they came to him and said, what shall his name be? He had already worked through all of his discouragement over his son, not being what he wanted him to be. And finally said, Lord, whatever he needs to be, whatever it needs to be, I'm good. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And it says that he wrote his name is John. His mouth is opened. And when his mouth is opened, the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's the same context of Acts chapter 2. Yet Jesus wow. has not even been born yet. And Zacharias is filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesies, my boy, my yeah. boy is going to be a voice crying in the midst of the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. I tell you what, I can... Uh... I am so aware of the Holy Ghost moving right now. Mm. I, it's, Scott, we are talking to folk that have almost given up. Yeah. You're thinking, my God, this, this desert can, can, how much longer? How long can I keep going? Yeah. It's just, it's just barrenness, dryness. I, I, I know there are pastors watching. There's nothing more yes. painful. I know this. There's nothing more painful than going onto a platform and standing behind a pulpit and there'd be no oil and nothing. And the engine, the gears of the engine and the pistons, and there's no oil. And it's, it's just, it's hellacious. And you're thinking, my God, how long do I have to keep going through the motions? You've got to keep doing what you're doing until the water comes. 
because it's the night time. It's, it's, the, it's the night shift that God has you on right now. Yes. But I believe that there's a new day dawning. I can sense this in my spirit. I'm yes. going to get completely off the rails here. But I, want to, I don't know if you know this or not. When I was growing up, my favorite singing group was ABBA. ABBA. I love ABBA's music. Just, it's the most melodious, the harmonies. They broke up 40 years ago, 41 years ago, actually. And they haven't sang for 41 years. They are now in their mid-70s. In their mid-70s. And last week, they released two songs from a new album they're doing. And they said, this is what they said, when we all got back into the studio and we began to sing, it was as if time had disappeared. That's right. And the guy that does the, the writing, just a genius. I don't know if you know how, how Abba makes their music, but the guy with the beard, Benny, he writes the music and records the music and then he gives it to Bjorn and he writes the words to match the music. It's, it's insane. And this is what, he was on a, a podcast and I was watching him and, and the, the, the man says, how does it feel now compared to what it was before you came back and became Abba again? And he said, it's, it's the first time I felt like I, 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 sh I am what I should be. And if, if that is true over secular songs and guys that yeah. haven't sang together for 41 years and getting into a studio and the, the woman's voices are unbelievable, the two, the two new songs are genius. If you haven't found them, find them. They're genius songs. Absolutely brilliant. I'm, one, one of them stuck in my brain all day as I'm, I'm humming this, this melody that they've, they've done. But what I'm saying is if they can find that song again after 41 years, and that's just merely worldly songs and, and, and earthly genius, how much more ought you and I, who, who are anointed by the Holy Ghost, who are empowered by God, who have been enabled yeah. by, the, by, the, by the priesthood that He's given us, can stand yep. up in the nighttime, in the desert, and say, I'm ready for a fresh move and a fresh wave and yep. a fresh river of God to flow through my life. And I prophesy yeah. to you, I prophesy to you, it is yeah. on the way. Haggai says, I will shake all the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. And I'm expecting that God is going to fill the house of God with glory again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Man, you're getting men and women of up. God, I just, I <laughs> encourage you today. Men and women of God, I encourage you. It's time to tremble before yeah. the Lord again. It's time yeah. to shake under the anointing when you have the opportunity to share the gospel. For some of you, you've been stirring that fire and you've been trying to keep that fire lit just like yeah. they did in the Old Testament all night long at the midnight hour. Yeah. But listen, you've allowed the ash to grow. You haven't cleaned Build out up. the ash. It's time for you to clear out the ash. And when they cleared out the ash, then they changed their clothes. It's time for you to stop going to your pulpits. It's time to stop going before people with the ash of this world on you with discouragement yeah. and depression wow. on you. It's time to change your Close. Close. It's time to find your voice again. It's Hallelujah. time for you to stop being an echo of someone else and start being a voice crying in the midst yes. of the wilderness. If your identity is in the title of pastor, throw that stuff away. You are a child of God. You are a yes. son and a daughter of God. And you are not that. You are a voice. You are but a voice crying in the midst yeah. of the wilderness. Just take a pause today. Just take yes. a pause today. That, because that's the a world, word. The last thing. Pause the last is a thing word. The world. The last thing the word the world needs is another opinion. The world oh, needs someone with a word <laughs> yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. And the only way you get that is by pausing. Stop the noise and pause and just ask this question. Lord, what are you saying? Yes. That's it. Lord, what are you saying? And then when he tells you what he's saying, just go do it. Hallelujah. Just go do it. Sing just, again, O when, Baron. When you just spoke just now, as you said, as you said, pause. I just pause. felt impressed. I, I, we've got six minutes left. I would love if you would lead us in a prayer of repentance. This being the day of atonement. 
And I know there are a lot of folk watching just now and, and you're thinking, my Lord, man, I've, I've been grumbling and griping, but I need, I need to say sorry. This morning I was, I was repenting here before the program. I was asking God to forgive me and I was thanking Jesus that every day is a Yom Kippur day for him because of grace. And um, mm. it's time. Listen, whatever, whatever's past is past. It's under the blood of Jesus. Your mistakes and your failures of yesterday, it's done. It's forgiven. It's forgotten. It's a new day. It's time to rise and stir yourself again. Everybody makes mistakes. Everyone, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The sin isn't in the falling. Everyone falls. The sin is in the lying down and staying down in, in, in becoming like a pig in slop in your own failure. You're not destined for a pig pen. You're bigger than that. You're better than that because God is in you and it's Christ in you that's a hope of glory. Scott, five minutes. Pray for us today. Uh, uh, this prayer of, of atonement that God will put all this stuff behind us and we can start afresh on a new day and this wilderness is going to come to an end in Jesus' name. Lord, we just, we, we repent Jesus. right now. We repent, Lord. We turn from our Jesus. ways, our ways this of thinking, so our ways so of speaking that have come against your word, that have come against your commandments and your declaration. Lord, forgive us today, Lord. We just lay ourselves before you. God, forgive us for, for trying to be an echo of something else, Lord, and even being an echo of the world at times with our with our hurt feelings and our harsh words and our, uh, and our actions. Lord, forgive us, Lord. We don't want to be an echo. We want to be a voice, no. a voice crying in the midst of the wilderness, Lord. Oh. We, we repent for, the, for hanging our harps upon the willows, Lord, and no longer yes. singing the songs of Zion. Lord, Babylon needs us to sing the songs of Zion. Yes, Lord, the world needs us to sing the songs of Zion. Uh -huh. Lord, we will no longer be silent. We will not stop singing. We will not hang our harps on the willows, Lord God, no. but we will play. We will sing. We will be a voice, Lord God announcing that there is a king. Lord, we're yes. going to be a voice that announces there has been a king that has been Hallelujah. coronated. He is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And we're going to announce that that king is coming back, Lord. Yes. And we thank you for that promise of an eternal kingdom. And Lord, we yes. thank you that there is a trumpet sound that's coming, that it's not coming from a natural trumpet, but it's a yes. sound coming from heaven. And Lord, yes. we just want to be ready. We want our lamps to be full of oil. We want our our, our uh, flames be, to be Jesus. white hot, Lord God. We want our flames. We don't want to be looking for somebody Tendous, else's Lord. oil. We want to be ready and trimmed, Lord God, and on fire for you, Lord, declaring you to the earth. Yes, and Father. Lord, I thank you today for this word. I thank you, Lord. And we're going to walk from this place. Yes. And we're going to sing in our barrenness. We're going to yes. enlarge. We're going to stretch. We're going to grow. We're going to strengthen ourselves. We're going to put our roots in even deeper yes. in your word. And Lord, we pause today. We just simply ask, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying to me right now? Lord, whatever that is, I'm going to get up from this moment and I'm going to do what you say in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. We, we, many years ago, we used to sing a song. I've taken my harp down from the willow tree. My heart is singing the victory. The past is forgiven. My home is in heaven. All sorrow has gone. The glory has shone, and now I am free. I didn't know how to sing the songs of Zion, for I was lost in sin. All of my life was sobbing and sighing. I had no peace within. Then Jesus came, spoke my name, whispered peace to me. Now I've taken my harp down off that willow tree. I've taken yeah. my harp down from the willow tree. My heart is singing the victory. My past is forgiven. My home is in heaven. All sorrow has gone. The glory has shone. And now I am free. And I believe today, Scott, that people are taking their harps down off the yeah. willow tree. And they're saying, we are going to be the song of the Lord in Babylon, in this barren land. And by singing... Yeah. We are going to cause the river of God and life to flow in our world and in the world we live in, in Jesus' name. Wow. Yeah. Time's gone. Scott, thank you so much. 
what a blessing. What a blessing. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me today. I always love these conversations. And more than that, I love you. I love I, you, brother. I know you do. And uh, you need to get in contact with Scott. It's, it's real simple. THPShreveport.com. THP, the healing place. THPShreveport.com. And one of the things that I'm excited about, what one Scott has turned me on to coffee. And um, if, can they get in contact with you? You have your own, your own line of coffees. Roasting, are, yeah, I've got, a, yes. I've got. I'm doing coffee roasting, and they can find me on Instagram. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Normally, I put the stuff out on my personal page. So yeah, yeah we're I, very, very do, close I, to getting our business license. Uh, Yes, this is so cool because, I mean, this guy's a coffee connoisseur. He drives me crazy with this coffee connoisseur. <laughs> Listen, we love you. We're going to have you back again real soon. Thank you for your Rhema War today on, on Daily Faith. We love you guys. Yeah. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to www.dailyfaith.tv or by writing to Post Office Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner, and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention, Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 25, Clinton, Tennessee, 37716.